Prepare for a very weird gym strategy day because uh, the focus of this gym run is going to be uh, on the buffs made to the top half boomer. Here are the changes in its mighty glory with buffs coming to the tier 3, 4, and 5. However, I actually don't want to showcase the clay floor today, so kindly ignore that, although do note it is just a little bit stronger now. The main focus is on the Glaive Ricochet and the Morglaives though because it's actually a pretty big buff. Granted, how much better are they nowadays because uh, technically it's an F tier tower in my opinion in any game mode that's not either Apocalypse or the race. First, let me just see if it's possible to beat round 6 with a single boomerang, maybe long range, because then I can get like red hot rings next round and... Uh, I think that'll probably do. Let's just see. Last all the way right now. Back to first. Maybe straight line or changing the arm here. Uh, it's close. Although I don't know if what I'm trying is actually possible. On cornfield at least. Okay, let me just see if 010 is better first. I think it obviously is. Just need to probably change one shot back and first. And yep. Only problem is now though, I want to cross back to the top one of course. Because I want to focus on the top path. This is not going to be Black Border, by the way, so yes, I'm going to allow myself to restart it. I guess if I can survive this one round, I can go for a second Boomerang, and then our early game is actually in the clear. I think what I'm trying to attempt here is impossible, though, so fine. We'll just do 0 for, you know, pretty insane attack speed. Yep, that's that's much better. We can keep it on last. And it pretty much beats all the greens, okay. Aside from this part here, come on. Held up for quite a while, though. Okay, this isn't supposed to be a boomerang only run, but I'd love to not have to drop anything else other than boomerang early game. Let me just see if there's another way. Okay, how about this spot here? Um, back to first here? Looks like it's holding all right. Until, of course, the greens inevitably cuck us. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm trying either something impossible or simply too hard that's not worth doing, so fine. Rip the boomerang only dream. It'll have to be just an extra dart monkey. But now, if you will, please allow me to go over the changes done to the Glaive Ricochet and the Morgulaves. First off, this is probably the biggest price cut percentage-wise the tower has ever seen in the history of BG6 balance changes, but half price off of Glaive Ricochets now. Obviously, to compensate, they have nerfed it by reducing the pierce, but the thing is, again, if you're not playing on anything, any game mode that's not a race or pop lips, you're not hitting 60 pierce like a majority of the time. So by all counts, this is a buff, even including the reduced bounce distance between, you know, with a ricochet. So since I said I wasn't going for Glaive Lord earlier, yes, that means I'm going to try to beat Cornfield using majority of the damage being on the Morglaives or Glaive Ricochet. Speaking of Morglaives, it technically gets an indirect buff due to the price decrease. It's now $600 to buy cheaper overall. But the craziest thing to know here is that they got a pretty insane attack speed buff. That's 0.6 to 0.4 seconds attack cooldown is equivalent to 1.5 times the attack speed. And the only nerf they did to it was, again, Pierce. But there are so few rounds we're going to use up Hunter Pierce, so... Uh, even if you did take into account that the Morgulave was Pierce capping every single shot, it would still be an overall buff, because, you know... 20% less Pierce in exchange for 50% more attack speed? The math is pretty simple. We have the money now, by the way, so I guess I'll just get this for the early game. That's what the more glaives or glaive ricochet supposed to be for as a solid early game popper. So we'll see how this carries us through, I guess, early game cornfield. It looks like the bounce distance is still good enough that it bounces between those space blacks in round 20. By the way, I know it 302 would get me double the damage on the uh, glaive ricochet, but late game, you actually want the attack speed, and I'll explain a little bit later, but this is nice. I'd say if you're working on a single lane map, glaive ricochet has its place in the early game since it's well, so incredibly cheap. Uh, also, in case you're wondering why am I using Gwendolyn, that's because uh, Synergies, ever since they removed the damage buff on Geraldo Sharpening Stone, which would have been really great since these things only do one damage, but now they give a useless pierce to something that already has 80 pierce, so what even is the point? Gwendolyn, though, gives you plus one damage with the heated up ability, and whenever you use the level 10 ability. And again, plus damage is what I'm looking for. That is why I believe... She is the way. Although I could also use Pat Fusty, but I like the global the global ability. Her plus one damage buff will work to all towers on screen if I use level 10, as opposed to Pat's limited range. And considering how cheap these things are, yes, you best believe I'm going to be spamming it all over the map. That's why I chose such a spacious map like Cornfield. Also, yeah, what an easy early game. We can save up $5,000. And here's what I'll do with that $5,000 uh, real quick if I could. 
Okay, I can't be that greedy and go for a discounted Raider Scanner. Fair enough, Cornfield is keeping me in check by not going too ham at the discounts. I think I definitely ought to do more silly chimps runs, though, as in chimps runs with towers that are generally not very good. Also, how the hell did we snipe that? But yeah, just basically picking a weak tower and then spamming so much of them that they actually become very good when, you know, combined in unison. And that's the vision I see with the boomerangs here. Also, I think just for the early game, I will do, you know, one three zero two. But the reason why I want to go for the attack speed instead is because I plan to get, I think, a good synergy since they all do one damage is, well, the glue storm also. Okay, I'm gonna have to restart that. I guess the Srams are a little bit too spaced. I'll just use Gwen's Cocktail. I think it should come back for round 40. If not, uh, I'll figure something out. This round definitely begs the question of uh, how is my mob damage even going to work if I'm spamming one damage things? Well, I guess for the early game, it's going to be super sketchy. Uh, I'll see if one extra Morglaves does a job. With increased tax speed, yeah, only two damage per. Nowhere near good enough. I guess we could always just get started outbuffing early, since I, uh, I I did plan to get them anyways from my boomerangs. I'll start with outbuffing Gwen, a 3-2-0, and let's see, we'll drop it on the intersection, please pop. Well, most damage we've done to it so far. We actually popped it, but we're missing, like, just a hair. Hang on, why did I just think of removing the corn down here, so that all the towers attack earlier? I think that ought to help a good amount, right? Pop early enough, please. Ooh, that is even closer. Alright, how about now? Oh, yeah, there we go. I just had to land the AMD shot on Gwendolyn. And it's scuffed, I know, but that does the job. Now we can see uh, 402 just melt the 40s in the meantime. I kind of want to just keep 302s just to see how good they they could last. But that's alright. This will no longer make it a boomerang only damage, although I guess Gwendolyn was already a non-boomerang in the first place. But I kind of want to get expertise during this run, too. Just since that provides with free tier 2s. Meaning, I think if I'm doing the math properly, every single time I apply a Glaive Ricochet, it'll be under $1,000 each. I don't know how viable it is nowadays, but I remember it not too long ago, people were using the primary expertise plus, like, Mauler strategy, because it's a really strong strategy when you have a cheap tier 3 that's also decently strong. I think Mauler is much, many steps above Ricochet, though. But surely for this cheap, that should still mean something, right? So, uh, before I go for anything else, yeah, I'll try to rush it so I can save as much money as possible. Now, with increased Gwendolyn shots, we should have no problem against the Moabs. Okay, we're still kind of falling behind if there's, like, multiple Moabs, so I'll probably just use some of Gwendolyn's abilities, like, say, the Cocktail. Just to squeeze in some extra mob damage if we need to. And, man, you know what? Maybe I don't want to rush the XP's just yet. Let's actually start with the Stronger Stim first. Just because I actually want to see how good the buff Morglaves is now against, like, round six, like round 63. It's pretty likely I'll need more than just this, though, for the BFB. Let me see if I can get away with it, though. Would I use... No, let's use Firestorm when they pop. They can pop, right? Like that. Easy. Yes, that's right. This defense popped the BFB. This is not a drill. This is not a drill. I'll probably use Cocktail, though, because f mobs are probably harder than BFBs. Let's see, do I need to use... get a second more glaives? I might just use my level 10 this round, if I need to survive. But okay, we're good. And now, let's see how good this more glaives is, folks. It wiped out the wave. I'm not surprised because that's what his niche is, but... I swear the 50% attack speed is making it, like, so much easier. But we love to see it. I can't even buy Glaiva right now, but I will... I will try to resist. I think I've showcased a lot of Glaive lore recently. So it's all good, it's all good. Let's get two more glaives before expertise. Because he has some bad baller. Uh, and somehow, we we're even able to beat those f mobs there too. Again, just level 10 ability. The moment we can. In fact, we were actually able to hold off from uh, needing to use level 10 ability for quite a while. Because, again, the ricocheting effect made it look like balloons are close to the exit. But luckily, uh, enough of them bounced to the exit that we didn't really need to need to do that. You might have heard of the Dark Knight mid-game save-up, or the Dragon's Breath mid-game save-up, or the Bads mid-game save-up, but have you heard of the Morglaive save-up? Not until this update you haven't. 44,000 and counting. I know it triggers some people sometimes when I float cash for no reason other, other than to flex, but... I think it's just funny to see just how ridiculously high the money count can go when I, like, I have the opportunity to. And even 75, I didn't have to use anything there. The Rigo 76, I'm not worried at all. 
I mean, props to Gwendolyn leveling up, leveling up over time because her getting extra mob damage allows us to pop mobs earlier so that these guys can clean up easily. Obviously, once round 81 hits, uh, their usefulness drops off a cliff. So as fun as this looks right now, it'll have to end soon. Not before we save the Wobbin $60,000 plus, though. Sheesh. Also, we almost leaked there, so... Probably gotta use some Gwen abilities for the FB if easier, especially. Luckily, we got a little bit of a head start in the damage. I'll probably cocktail uh, the F mobs. Just so they pop a little bit earlier. Uh, nice. And probably a Firestorm to finish us off. I don't trust this. Okay, I I really didn't think we'd clean that up, but every, every day that keeps on surprising me. Or rather, every round. Okay, with the ZMG here, though, definitely. I think we'll get expertise now. The fun is over. Time for this guy to help do some mob damage. And so let's do the math now. We get a 15% discount off of 350, which is something like under 300. Free tier 1s and 2s with 550, meaning $850. A little bit under that. If that is an insane steal slash bargain, then I don't know what, what is. So we'll also do... Let's do extra range so we can get... A discount on maybe... Uh, let's see, let me get another boomerang here. And then let me get my glue storm discounted as well. Cause, let's try to think about it. If this is 850, then buying this is about 5 times cost. But is Morglaze really 5 times stronger than a Glaive Ricochet? Here's how I'll find out the answer to that. Let's drop two separate boomerangs now. This one will be 320, this one will be 420. We'll see if this gets like 5 times more damage than the 320. Because frankly, it, it still might. Let's take a look now. Oh yeah, it's 1,000, 5,000. Actually, no, it's pretty close. It's like it's like exactly 5. Way to make me uh have like a tough decision then. That 50% attack speed buff is huge. Because now I think the Morglaive shoots 2.5 times faster than the Glaive Rickshay. But it also has like nearly triple the pierce. Which, I guess if you do the math, does end up being close to 5 times overall DPS. And how much uptime do I have the Clue Storm with the Expertise? Like, 90%, so I think we can even skip the MIB. Might just have to be a little bit careful, though, making sure the downtime, the 10% downtime isn't when, like, DTs come right up. Fellas, we're only getting started. I think just because I have so much money floating around, I'll start with the very cheap Glaive Ricochets, and then I'll upgrade them to more Glaives if we need to. So far, though, no difficulty whatsoever. I do realize, though, we're playing on Cornfield, which is, uh, more like an intermediate map once you remove the corn. So it's no surprise... Well, there's no difficulty right now. We got level 20 Gwendolyn now, as well. And here is, uh, another DT round, which is gonna be beaten easily. Like, can you believe an army of these guys can actually take down such tough rounds? Uh, I put this on Strong also. Maybe I'll leave... Yeah, I'll put Gwendolyn on Strong, too. All the mob damage on Strong, the other cleanup stuff can go on first, and you can see how good that's working for us. Unfortunately, I'm now out of space surrounding my extra piece, so I might even, like, spend 1k to move this thing, just to add, like, maybe 2 or 3 boomerangs up here, although maybe that's not worth it. No, that's not worth it. We'll upgrade these existing ones to more glaives if we ever need more DPS, but here it, this is against round 95. I guess during the 10% 10, 10 downtime of Blue Storm, I could just use, like, Firestorm. That also acts as our DT popping. Allows all these to hit lead. Checking back with our 320 versus 420 test, it's pretty much exactly 5 to 1 ratio. You literally couldn't get any closer than that. Which is crazy. We definitely need to spend way more money on bad defense, though. If F, like, ZMG is on 97 or causing issues, uh, that's not good. I'll have to use a heated up. And only that barely beat it. Now, who's ready for some round 98 destruction? Again, put Gwendolyn back on strong so that our Morglaives can deal with everything. Sure, we'll use Cocktail as well to target the uh, Moabs. Actually, back in first again. And there it is. A very satisfying round 98 kill with that insane ricochet in action. And, oh boy, the downtime perfectly went over the... Uh, the downtime of the uh, glue storm. Am I dead? I'm uh, almost dead. Sheesh. Okay. Uh, I'll just add one spike storm here. Just because I know there's not enough bad damage. Let's hope boomerangs can finish the job. I'll use level uh, 10 for the damage. Uh, glue storm. Cocktail. Uh, and we might just be missing a little bit. Just a little bit of damage. 
Okay, let me just break the bank a little bit. We'll upgrade some of these two Glaive Lord or more Glaives. Whatever the case, though, it still might be too little too late. Let's see. I got the Gwen ability off for plus one. Gloostrom again for plus two. Cocktail? Ah, I think we're just gonna miss a little bit. Unless the Ricochet can save us. Oh. Nice. That was the clutchest expertise shot I've ever seen. I don't think I can end this without giving free play a run, though. If you didn't know already, round 101 plus is mega dense, which plays perfectly in our favor. Hopefully, I can show you how good they are in the 100 plus as well. Okay, that was still close, so let's actually start spending our money now, along with getting some alk buffs for uh, these four two zeros here. Uh, scaling is also an issue, I can see. I'll use a spike stream to help clear it out, but I don't know, this is super sketch. Somehow still holding on, though. I also just realized that when we alk buff the expertise, obviously the range gets a lot bigger, so I actually can squeeze in a couple more free boomerangs in, although they end up losing the camo detection if it's not out buffed. The only problem, uh, DTs. I'm gonna spike stream that just to be super safe. Can I just say again though, it's so satisfying seeing just a huge balloon clump get annihilated. Annihilated by the army of glaives. Honestly, let's see if I can fit. Can I fit an ice tower here possibly? Oh, I can. It might eat up an out buff, but I think it's worth also getting a plus one damage buff. Okay, y'all are not ready for the chain reaction that is this round, all right? Look how many ZMDs we have to break down. Once we pop the first thing down, though, here comes the chain reaction. FBFBs. FMOABs. Actually, still might be a little bit close. Uh. Blue Storm. And another clutch by the expertise. And I'm dead this round. Ah, good try. I also just realized I was trying to beat all these mob rounds this whole time without even a mob glue, which is unheard of in today's day and age. Also, I had to restart this round, so I lost my glue storm. Okay, come on, one last try here. Otherwise, that's a game. And yeah, same thing every single time. You get the point, though. Not actually a terrible strategy, as long as you don't go overboard like I did. This is just for uh, the funsies, for the showcase. You can't deny how much punch each boomerang packed in, though, for only like $4,000 each. Over 100k pops on every single one of the 420s here. A perfectly balanced team.